Hi people of the Philippines and people of the world, hit the button below and you will be subscribing to the Boy Abunda Talk channel on YouTube. Let's keep talking. Kaibigan, tuloy ang usap. The Philippine Women's University and the Philippine Star with JC Organic Barley, Joy Buzz, and Boyso of La Carmela de Boracay present Political Conversations with the Mayors, Part 1. Mayor Brian Celeste of Alaminos, Pangasinan. Yes, Tito Boy. Mayor, Thanks maraming salamat. Thank you for the invite. It's an honor na nasama ako dito sa episode na ito, Tito Boy. You were saying that in the beginning, takot ka magsalita sa harap ng publiko? Actually, I grew up being the scrawny kid, mahiyain, always back of the class. And I remember back in college... Scrawny as in payatot. Payatot. <laughs> oh, so, mahiyain talaga ako. I knew I had to do something about myself. If I knew that I stayed the way I am, being that shy kid, I wouldn't achieve a lot. Kakusapin ko sarili ko na kailangan mo magbago. You have to get out of your comfort zone for you to grow. So, that's where it all started. And sakto, my dad asked me, do you wanna serve? Do you wanna serve the public? And sige, sabi ko, for me, it was uh, outside the comfort zone na yun eh. Public speaking, public service. So I, I tried and my dad told me na, if you want to serve, you should be at the lowest position para masubukan mo. And it was barangay captain. So it was the lowest form of government and it's a good place to start. And I saw my dad growing up being a public servant. And nakita ko naman yung benefits in a sense na the way he helps people. Nakikita ko yung impact na pwede mong ibigay sa tao. And nakita ko, if there is a chance for me to serve and at the same time help me get out of my comfort zone being that shy kid, then why not take it? So it's like hitting two birds in one stone. So you get to try this certain thing and at the same time, you get you get out of that comfort zone which you have been wanting to do. Pero hindi sinabi ng dad na uh, kung interesado ka kailangan ka tumakbo dahil kailangan kang sumunod sa akin. Oh no. Oh, Walang no. ganung pag-uusap. My, uh, my I would always remember that my dad would always give us a choice. Kaming mga magkakapatid. Okay. So if you said no to your dad, you wouldn't have been in politics or public service. Probably. Okay. Uh, because I would like to get your take on the very controversial political dynasties. Okay. Anong iniisip mo? Political dynasties are not necessarily bad. And in a sense, hindi naman siya pinipilit ng mga dynasties. It's not them that pushes for it. It's the people's vote that bring us into the positions we're in right now. If you want to battle uh, the negative effects of political dynasty, it's a matter of educating the voters. The hands of the title, the positions we're in, are in the power of the voters. So it's mm -hmm. much more on educating which people to vote, even if they're a dynasty or not, but are they actually doing something good or not for their respective jurisdiction? I totally hear your point. Gaano kalala ang vote buying sa Alaminos? Well, it's not as rampant as the, ano, kasi in other provinces, because in, in our city, ang nakikita pa rin talaga ng tao is yung servisyo ng tao. No matter how much you pay someone, as long as you've helped this per particular person with the programs that my father has done, syempre hindi nila kakalimutan. So it's not yun. as bad as other areas? It's not as bad. Elections can be scary. It can be so negative. It can be so chaotic. It can it be is. so uh, toxic. Nariyan na yung uh, negative and positive campaigning. Pwede ka naman lumaban na hindi kayo nagsisiraan. So what was your experience like in the two elections you've been through? Sabi mo nga, Tito Boy, that's very... Ano na yan? It's given. Whatever you, wherever you go, where, whatever you do, meron at merong mema. May mama yung masabi and... Of course, it's gonna sting a little. Pero sabi ko nga, when it's election time, walang magbabasa ng comments. What was the biggest issue raised against you? For me, it was my age. 
they would mock me. Uh, th this kid is this kid is too young. May gata sa labi, walang alam. Ano, ang sinabi pa nga, umuuhog pa. Pero How nga, did you fight that? I just told them, at the end of the day, it's your choice if you want to try me. Yun lang naman yung sinasabi ko. Just give me the opportunity to serve. Ngayon na ikay pangalawang term na as mayor, pag-usapan natin yung style of leadership. Are you in the shadow of your father? Are you crafting your own style of leadership? Sino ka bilang isang leader? My dad and I are very different. Different in a way na I'm very meticulous. So And your dad is not? Basta when he was the mayor, he was like, I want this done, let's do it. Yeah. Ah, okay. Me, Ikaw? I look at the data, I look at the necess the resources, the pros and cons. Okay. So I look at everything before actually doing deciding and I look at my peers for evaluation what do you think of this what do you think of Consensual. that Consensual So it's more of a collaborative leadership that I do in the city If you were asked as to what your biggest achievement is for your town anong sasabihin mo Ngayon ang ginagawa natin ngayon is we're actually developing a new downtown and that's something that I would want to leave a legacy kasi syempre that, that, that's the that vision that I have since nung last three years was more mainly on pandemic response and majority of the funds went to the pandemic response. So in terms of infra, infrastructure development, wala masyado. So you have to focus on other things, which is the pandemic. But now, marami kami mga plano na ginagawa ngayon and hopefully uh, in this term and the next term hopefully that I get, ma-fulfill ma yung vision ko for Alaminos to have to be its own commercial hub in Western Pangasinan. How much political resistance do you have in the City Hall? Kaalyado mo ba ang uh, well, mga konsehal? Kaalyado mo ba ang mga katrabaho mo? Or, or do you fight for your programs, for your policies? Uh, noong 2019, I could see the tension of the munisipyo noon. Kasi syempre, bata and all the department heads were... Okay more or less double my age so i had i knew that i had to do something like i had to gain their respect somehow so okay, it was a challenge for me how'd you do it and that's how i did the pandemic and Ayun. all the services were good and people saw what i did and syempre, naging, ano na siya, naging snowball effect and mm. a lot of people were proud of me and then in sila na rin, nadala na, okay, this is my mayor and I'm proud Okay, of I get it. Do you have a local party? Do you, have, uh, do you belong to a national party? National party. So, Which is? Uh, with the Villiers. Mm, Nationalista, Nationalista party. party. Yeah. Okay, how important is that? I mean, do you believe that the multi-party system in this country, from the lens of uh, local government, does it actually work? Are you for a multi-party system? Are you for a two-party system? You know, something, ano talaga eh, that, that's the thing, that's the scare about a two-party system. It might get too polarized. Okay. So that's the scary thing, when it becomes a two-party system. But, what, with what we have now, parang, oh, oh, nandiyan na yan, it doesn't talk about ideologies or whatever, you're, you're, you're basically going to a party because someone's here, someone's there. Kasap, kaibigan mo yung ganito, ganon. Oo, medyo wala siyang effect in the way that you want to. But it's just scary when you put a two-party system and the country becomes too polarized. I understand. Yes. Polarization happens also in a multi-party system, mm -hmm. which happened very, very clearly in the last presidential elections. Napaka-divided pa rin, napaka-polarized pa rin. Well, elections in general are polarizing. Are polarizing. Uh -oh. so, Pero ang paniniwala mo, Brian, pag dalawa, mas lalong mag, exactly. magbabakbakan. Exactly. And for me, it doesn't really have an effect. Parang being in a political party doesn't really give that a big of an effect in a sense when you're managing. Okay. When you're managing. But in election, it helps. So for me, political parties are there when election comes. Okay. Four or five years into uh, politics, what are the things that you still want to learn in government service, in public service, in, in politics? Actually, the one thing that I would want to learn more is urban planning. Because that's one thing that really... You're managing a city. So when you want to make something, you don't... A lot of politicians would just do projects in a... Pichi-pichi. 
And then, pagdating na 10 years, 15 years, you would think back, we should have done this. Right. Oh, uh, we did this and now mali pala siya. And it takes a What lot are you doing to address this? Are you, do you have experts advising you we on? We are getting. So, itong development na ginagawa namin, it's not peachy peachy. Okay. That's why we're developing a 40 hectare property. Hindi siya yung basta basta lang. Kasi nga, that's, some, that's okay. hard to undo. That's the that's the thing that I realized before. Kaya ang hirap ngayon ng like yung traffic in Alamina. So and you're spending people's money. Mm -hmm. That's why you cannot rush things. Exactly. Tama yung sinasabi mo. Uh -huh. Hindi ka nahihirapan from urban planning to uh, education to climate change to tourism. Tapos uh, may araw-araw kang buhay. Uh, expectations are very high. Kasi kung disadvantage yung youth mo during the elections, pag nanalo ka naman, napakataas ang expectations in a study, no? As, uh, somebody said that ang tumataas naman yung expectations sa mga tao mm -hmm. dahil you have so much energy, you have so much to give, hindi ka napapagod. Well, sabi ko nga eh, uh, I, I tell my friends, kasi I have other hobbies as well. And they tell me, like, small hobbies, like photography, uh, I used to make short films, so they tell me, but my time kapanyan mm. to do all those things. And I tell them, alam mo, we have 24 hours in a day. You say eight hours of that is for you sleeping. Another eight hours is you working. So that's 16 hours. Another four hours of that is you eating or doing whatever. And you, you, you're still left with another four hours that you can do. And an hour of doing something, marami, malaki na yun. Malaking bagay. You, malaking bagay na when you do it every day. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I try to like manage. You time manage. In, in, yeah. in time so 24 hours, how much, how many hours are for love? It's love for the people. <laughs> and yeah, 24 hours, yeah. Uh, 24 hours. No, but you also have to take good care of yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. not just, you know, health wise, but holistically. Of course, you know, of course. At the end of the day, ano, malaking baga yung mental health. Tama. Mahirap yung nagsisilbi ka ng wala ka sa mood. Oh. Kasi the days grow longer. Okay. Diba? You know, uh, one of the greatest leaders in the world said one time, na ang kanyang political equation ay, what is it that you want in the end and what is the best way to get there? Your comment. I, I tell this to my friends and sinasabi ko sa kanila, the one thing that makes me happy in life is not to actually make me happy, but to see others happy. And I know that it a part of them being happy is because of me. Mm -mm. So that's one thing that resonated with me. And for me, naging ano siya eh, sustainable in a sense na you'll always be fulfilled. That's servant leadership. You'll always be fulfilled. Kasi mm -mm. you see the happiness in other people's happiness. Mm -mm. And when you focus on yours, at the end of the day, there will always gonna be people that will have a better life, that was always gonna be more happy. And you're always gonna want more. When okay. certain things make you happy. And right. yun, it's very sustainable because the things that make you happy are other people that are happy. If you have the power to do this, Brian, as, as a public leader, as a public figure, hypothetical, nagkasala ang kapatid mo, kaya mong ipakulong? Depende sa sala. In a sense na... Halimbawa na patunayan na may sala. Oh, siyempre, we have, the law is the law. You could have been into business, I know your dad asked you to get into politics. You could have been really rich. You could have been so much, you could have, you know, been, you know, uh, a big entrepreneur or a businessman, but you chose to get into public service. In hindsight, I know you've been in politics not for a long time. In hindsight, you're happy with that decision. Like I said, uh, being rich doesn't really make me a fulfilling person. It's the one thing that seeing other people happy is the thing that makes me happy. And Sabi ko sa mga kaibigan ko, I mean, when they see politicians, they, they see them up there. They see politicians as someone who's above everyone else. And I, I told my friends, actually, you know, I would give it up just to have a simple life. Mm -hmm. And yun, and I think I still stand by it four years in being a mayor, having all the, the authority and... Okay. Siyempre, like people would corrupt, uh, absolute power corrupts. All right. And there are instances being in a certain position as I have right now that it will give you the opportunity to use absolute power. 
Okay. But it's not me. Last night of the world, you were supposed to host dinner and you were to invite five guests. Last night, sino ang iimbitahin mo at bakit? Of course, it will be my family. Sakto, lima sila. So, you will have dinner with your family. Yeah. Actually, that's one thing that me, na medyo nawala. Being a politician now. I'm being a mayor. Kasi we all have separate lives. Right. I mean, my dad, we, I, my dad still lives in Alaminos, but he's a congressman now. Laging nasa, lagi siyang nasa Manila. And whenever I'm in, whenever pag weekend naman, ako naman yung nasa Manila, eh, he goes to... So right. Never nagsasabay. Mm-hmm. Though long story short, never nagsasabay yung yung time namin, especially with my siblings. And that's really something that I miss. Na nakikita na lang kami pag special occasions. Right. Yeah, right. Something that you really miss. If you have your way, would you want to get married in your 30s or late? You're 27 now. Uh in my 30s. I, on, oh, no, on, I mean, my limit is 30. 30. Because I want to grow up with the kids. Tama. So, fa- and then I'm really inclined to being a family-oriented okay. person. Okay. Provinciano ka, provinciano ako. Mm-hmm. I'm sure tinatanong ka ng mga kababayan mo, Mayor, kailan ka pa mag-aasawa? I'm sure you get that question. Sabihin ko, tagal pa yun. Tagal pa. Uh, uh, it's about uh, three years uh, well, from actually, now. Well, actually, before. <laughs> that was before. Ah, the yun ang pre- sagot mo. Oh, but now, come to think of it, I have to rephrase my answer kasi wala pang Uh-oh. nagtatanog sa akin nun recently. Uh-oh. But eh, my life goal would hopefully by 30. Mayor Brian, are you single? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you were to create a slogan for Mayor Brian, not the slogan of the family of the party, what would that slogan be today? It would be something that would resonate in a lot of people. Being in politics, siempre, like I said, people see you differently. And siguro if I were to have a slogan, it's me, Brian Celeste, para lang ikaw at ako. Something, something <laughs> that goes along those lines. It's, it's hard to make now. But it's very personal. Spot. It uh, sounds very personal. It's about uh, ikaw at ako. You are at the pearly gates. You are at the entrance of heaven and God is there. Hmm. And he says, Brian, ano ang pinakamabuting bagay na nagawa mo para sa akin? Anong sasabihin mo sa Panginoon? Well, siguro, I wouldn't say something that's very band-aid. Like, you know, but I think it's... I. I inspired someone to be better, like holistically, really, like as a person, and I think that's something that I'm really proud of. And I had a friend, I told him, I'm getting a tattoo, and it, I want it to be personal, but if you were to describe me as a person, what would it be? That na yun ang papa tattoo ko. And he said, Brian, siguro pag mamimili ako ng tattoo mo, it would be a lighthouse. Bakit? Sabi ko, bakit? Because you help me find the way. Mm. So, ayun. Now I have a lighthouse tattoo. If people ask me, bakit lighthouse? Sabi na, it's so random. So you have that now? Uh, it's so random. That's bakit lighthouse? Sabi ko. Well, I tell them that story. Na, uh, I find lost souls find their way. Mm. And it's something that I'm very proud of. Huli na lamang, as a follow-up, because you spoke about the lighthouse. If your dad, Congressman Celeste, were to describe you in a word, and don't tell me to ask your dad, because I will one day. If he were to describe you in one word, ano sa palagay mo ang salita na sasabihin ng iyong ama? Ang hirap naman ng one word. Uh, if my dad would describe me, determined. Brian, maraming salamat and continue to serve continue to love your country. Thank you. Thank you, Tito Boy. We'll always do for our city and, of course, our country. Maraming salam. Thank you. Presented by the Philippine Women's University and the Philippine Star with JC Organic Barley, Joy Bus, and Boiso of La Carmela de Boracay. Hi, people of the Philippines and people of the world. Hit the button below and you will be subscribing to the Boy Abunda Talk channel on YouTube. Let's keep talking. Kaibigan, tuloy ang usap.